Microsoft calls it stateful firewall as a service. And high availability is built in. And by built in, I mean there's no load balancer required to deal with virtual network appliance failover. And part of the solution is to auto scale so you don't have to size your infrastructure for peak loads. And you can centrally create and enforce and log all of your application and network connectivity policy across subscriptions and virtual networks. And we can filter inbound and outbound traffic and support hybrid hub-to-spoke and spoke-to-spoke -spoke scenarios. But we can also watch hybrid connection traffic. So that means site-to-site -site VPN and even express route can be incorporated into our scenarios. And we can log this traffic in a number of ways. We can send our firewall logs to an Azure storage account. We can stream events to an event hub. Or we can send them to Azure Log Analytics or even a security information and event management system like Azure Sentinel, for example. There are a number of integration features that are interesting, and FQDN tags are one to look at. FQDN tags make it easy for you to allow well-known Azure network traffic through your firewall. Like, if you want network traffic from Windows Update to flow through your firewall, FQDN tags are going to be one way to accomplish that. Now, if you'll notice in the diagram here that threat intelligence is mentioned. And threat intelligence-based filtering, in this case, when we enable, means our firewall can alert us and deny traffic to and from known malicious IP addresses and domains. And those IP addresses and domains are sourced from Microsoft's threat intelligence feed. So that's the intelligent security graph at work. And Azure Firewall is also PCI, SOC, and ISO compliant out of the box. Now let's talk about DNAT and SNAT for just a moment. So SNAT would be our outbound connections. And with Azure Firewall, we can associate up to 100 public IP addresses to better support our high-scale scenarios. Essentially, we don't have to worry about port exhaustion. For DNAT, we can translate multiple standard port instances to our back-end servers. For example, if we have multiple public IP addresses and we want to translate inbound RDP traffic, that's where DNAT comes into play.